Hello and welcome back to Let's Code Physics. This is episode two on our series of studying a police officer chasing a speeding vehicle down the road. Um, we haven't really developed much of a story behind them. Who knows why this person is speeding, whether they're actually showing a disregard for the law or maybe there's you know, somebody giving childbirth in the car or something like that. Uh, but the point is we are trying to model this car, the speeder, as traveling at a constant velocity. And the police car is just going to be sitting here, uh, you know, watching the road initially at rest. That means its initial velocity is zero. And we're going to assume for right now that the police officer's acceleration is constant. Again, we're going to play around with both of these assumptions a little bit later. But what we're interested in is how much time it takes and how far it takes for the police officer to catch the speeder. And we can look for that by graphing both of their position functions and just looking for the intersection. The way we're going to do that is a technique called the Euler-Cromer method. Um, Euler originally came up with this. Uh, it became the Euler-Cromer method when Cromer suggested putting the uh, velocity at the next step in the process instead of the previous step, and that made the solution more stable. Uh, but the way it works is that we uh, create these things. Another name for these things is difference equations, where the velocity and the position at the next point in time are related to the velocity and the position at the current point in time plus either the acceleration or the velocity times the step forward in time. Um, and by the way, I'll have these uh, these uh, whiteboard files available um, in, the, uh, in the description below. So the goal today is to begin to implement these equations. Uh, the language we're going to be, uh, that I'm going to be working with today is Scilab. Scilab is a free clone of MATLAB. Uh, so you can follow along with Scilab if you want. I'll have a link to that in the description. Or if you've got a copy of MATLAB, feel free to use that. I prefer the free option to the money costing option. So here I am in Scilab. Um, so when we set this problem up, uh, in order to do this loop here, we need some initial value, right? We need some value at point one. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to set the initial values for police officer and speeder. So this is a comment. This is just uh, a little line that helps the, the human user of the program uh, remember what it is that they were writing. You just make a comment by these two slashes here. Um, and actually, before we do that, we're going to issue a clear command um, just so that uh, we get rid of any unnecessary variables um, that, are, that are lurking about in the computer's memory. The lurker. Um, and so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to set the initial position for each of these folks. So we're going to set the X f will mean position, uh, S will mean speeder, and 0 will mean initial. So this is going to be initial position of speeder and then we'll do the same thing for the police officer xp0 is going to be the initial position of police officer again these little slashes mean a comment the computer is not going to read anything after that and custom dictates that everybody starts at zero it just makes life easier and so so the zero point is where the police officer is looking at the speeder and realizing uh, that uh, that they need to give chase. Um, so we have their initial positions. We also need their initial velocities. So for that, we'll have velocity of the speeder. And let's see, what would be a reasonable value? Um, as a physicist, I like to use meters per second. I did a little math earlier. If this speeder were traveling at about 65 miles an hour, uh, that translates to about 36 meters per second. So this is initial speed of speeder at uh, in meters per second. And I keep referring to speed instead of velocity. They are technically different terms. Um, so if I've caused any confusion with that, I apologize. Uh, and then we'll have the initial velocity of the police officer is going to be zero, right? So the police officer is starting at rest. Initial velocity of police officer again in meters per second. And that's really all we need in terms of the um, initial velocities. Um, in a little bit, we will, oops, uh, yeah, yeah, let me, let me save this. Um, actually, I'll save it at the end, sorry. In a little while, uh, we're gonna test out a reaction time for the police officer, but I don't think I'm gonna set that yet. I think I'll, I'll work that in later. Um, 
No, actually, let's 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 go ahead and put it in now, and we'll just set it equal to zero. So let's call that reaction time of the police officer. Uh, we'll originally set that to zero. So this is the reaction time of police officer. Um, I'm thinking of this uh, in terms of you know a fraction of a second. Maybe you have a better idea. Uh, so leave me a, a note in the comments. What would be a reasonable reaction time for the police officer to see the speeder? read off the, the the speed, decide that they need to give chase and get the car moving. Um, you know, what would be a reasonable reaction time? Leave a, leave a note in the comments for what you think. So we're not gonna be using this variable just yet, but we'll just leave it there so that we remember uh, that we already have it. Okay, so we have the initial conditions set up. So the next step we need to take is to create the actual loop part of the code. We need to actually start using these equations. So. Uh, for for today for today's episode, we're just going to be looking at the motion of the speeder. The speeder has the advantage to where uh, the acceleration is zero, so that means that his velocity is constant, right? So if this whole term is zero, that just means the previous velocity equals the new velocity. So really, this equation is the only thing that we need for the speeder. So here's how we're going to work this. I'm going to leave a little space here. I, I like to work a code a little bit backwards, so I'm gonna set up the loop calculation uh, and then figure out what I need to do to get the loop started. So we're gonna be using a, a for loop for right now. And so let's say we wanted to work with a thousand data points. And I don't, I don't know what a reasonable value is, so we're gonna figure this out as we go. So what this, what this structure means is, is that uh, everything that's inside this block uh, on my screen it gets highlighted pink. I don't know if you can see it on the video. But basically, everything inside this block is going to be repeated for a count of 1, 2, 3, 4, etc., all the way up to 1,000. And this value i here is just our counter. And so basically, at this point, we just move this equation and put it into our code. So we have our position of the speeder at the next point. So this x is just position, s is the speeder, i plus 1 is the next point, is equal to, let's check the equation here, position at the previous point, so x at the previous point, plus, then I need its velocity times delta t. So I need the velocity of the speeder, velocity of the speeder, now that's a constant, so we're just going to use vs0, times delta t, our time step. Now what that means is, I need a value for this. I need to tell the computer what I want the time step to be. Usually you want the time step to be small, so if we're thinking in terms of seconds, I want this to be something like maybe a hundredth of a second. So this is the time step, usually small. And I also need to tell it what the initial value is. So what these parentheses mean here is that x is gonna, excuse me, xs, is going to be treated as an array. I realize I had different names here and here, so I was referencing two different arrays, and that's the problem. Um, whenever it has this parentheses i here in silo, it means that it's an array. It means that it's a table of values and not just a single value, and each one of those values in the table is referenced by the, uh, referenced by the label i, so we need to get the very first value set up, so x1, the very first value, again, xs, One, one of my goals in, in posting these let's codes is show that it is okay to make a mistake and then go back and fix it. And so we're gonna call that xs, we're gonna say that that's equal to xs0. I could have just called this xs1 up here, but to me it makes more symbolic sense to have this because this is what we're gonna be changing later on. Once we have everything below here fixed, it's, it's really not gonna change all that much. This is what we're gonna be playing around with up here. Um, and so that's all we need for right now because that will increment the, the speeder's motion forward. So from that, we'll be able to get a graph of position versus time. Oh, but what that also means I need is time values. So I need to keep track of what time it is in each step of this loop. So we're gonna create an array called time. The next value of time is equal to the current value of time plus dt, so each time, each step we take, we move forward by one value of dt, and so that means I also need to give it an initial value for the time array, and usually time starts at zero. Okay, 
So these two things were really not going to change. This part of the loop we're definitely not going to change. This we might change if we make the speeder accelerate at some point. Uh, and so what I'm going to do now is run the code. Uh, so this is Synotes. This is where it edits the code. This is the console where the code, uh, where the results are shown. And here we're going to run it. Uh, you need to save your modifications. Oh yeah, I do need to actually save the file. Um, so let's see. Uh, these are trial codes. Please ignore those. Uh, so this one we're going to call speeder motion. And I'm gonna let, I'm gonna make this file available uh, through a link in the comments or in the description, excuse me, I post in the description. I, I can also post in the comments. Um, so when we execute it, uh, nothing really happens. It doesn't display anything because we don't have anything here going to the screen. But if I ask it for array XS now, it's got an array there of the speeder's position. So let's take a look at what his motion looks like. So we're gonna plot time comma xs as always this is backwards when we say plot position versus time we mean that time goes on the first axis and position goes on the second axis uh, so let's do that this is constant velocity motion so its position versus time should be a line and that looks pretty linear to me let's also double check the value so in 10 seconds the speeder has gone well over here I can read off 360 meters so that is 10 times 36 is 360 i keep wanting to say 3600 360 and so we have successfully implemented not only this the speeder's initial conditions but also the loop to keep track of his motion so uh that'll uh, that'll wrap it up for today um in, so next time we are going to take a look at adding the constant acceleration motion of the police officer and then we'll be able to have two graphs see where they intersect and we'll actually have an answer to our problem so thank you for watching see you next time